I'm, I'm a civil engineer by training and I've been involved in marine works throughout my career. Wherever you go, you're always with nature, so you're trying to shape nature a bit. That's uh, really, that uh, drives me. One of my first thoughts was, this is a relatively undeveloped area, and we are planning for two LNG export berths. The ships need to reach that area, so I was a little bit puzzled about uh, how to do that. The first thing you look at is what has happened with this area in the past, what records are there available from natural development, but also how people are using that area. I think one of the things that people don't often know about is that there has been dredging in Kitimat Arm previously. We start talking to people about things like environment, but also things like how is the land used, who owns the land, uh, what is important to the people, how they use the water. We'll be out with the boat most of the summer. We'll probably start in the end of April. Just to love the water, I guess. Oh, I'd like to say there's no fish here at all, but I can't. I would be lying, but I don't want too many people to come here either. The herring should be showing up anytime. Then you go through your salmon season, you know, so this bay is pretty busy. Obviously, if you're going to bring these big ships in, you've got to dredge quite a bit. I don't know what the volume is going to be, so it's going to be a, an interesting to see how they do it. I want to know what's going on in my community. That's the big thing. We know we need industry, there's no doubt about industry, but we would like to be involved in the process a bit. If the companies aren't being honest with us, we're going to let them know. We looked at the wider areas as well, but when in location, it's all three to five. The ships that will come for LNG export are, are much bigger than what's coming at the moment, and therefore they're also deeper. So we need to create depth for the LNG carriers to reach the berth and to be safe at the berth. And uh, at the moment, the depth is not sufficient, so we need to make that depth by dredging it deeper. The quantity in itself is not so much if you compare to other projects that have been considered in British Columbia. When we looked into the scope, we found out that because of previous uh, industry development, there were some contaminants still in the area. So the, the first thing is that you go there and you drill down in, in the soil and go at different depth and take samples. And with that, we build a 3D model so we can see where exactly the contaminants are and where the clean material is. The red is the contaminated material. So the contamination is very close to the existing key sites. We have extensively engaged with Huisla and we will continue to discuss with the local communities so they are sure that they know what they can expect and what also are the uncertainties that we are dealing with. The main concerns were the contaminated material as well as the fishing areas that we'd be impacted. And everybody's got a fishing ground in Huisla territory. So we heard the answer from both our staff as well as LNG Canada that it wouldn't, in fact, if anything, they would try as much as possible to mimic nature. Because the solution they're talking about is mimicking the siltation that comes out of the Kinematic River naturally. And really that's what the biggest concern is, if it's going to impact somebody's halibut sites, for instance, or their prawning sites. So if the siltation is already down there, that's all they're talking about, is putting their clean product down on top of the existing silting sites in the channel. I'm fully 100% behind that concept. The site for the disposal sea is right out in front of us right here, right in the channel right here in front of Kitimat Village. There was a study done back in the 80s and the 90s that showed the amount of contamination that's sitting on the ocean bottom. So for us to actually cap that is actually a better solution than what anybody else has put forward before. The modeling is telling us that there isn't a, a really wide dispersion of the material. We investigated a number of locations and we came to a short list of five. And these different locations have different distance from the dredging site. By selecting the location closest to the dredging site, we think we have the best options for a number of reasons. The majority of the material, because the water is relatively stagnant, it will come straight under where you dump it. And when you go wider out, some of the fine material will spread around a bit. The impact will be very small, maybe a few millimeters on the seabed. The area we're looking at at the moment is in the order of two to four square kilometers. Depth-wise, they are comparable, more than 150, 200 meters, so it's very deep. You really feel that this location that we're proposing is 
the best between all the locations considered? Yeah, it is the best, the best of, of what uh, we, we see in the, in the neighborhood. The design and engineering part agrees to that. There's a few shrimp out there, no vegetation, no plants. We looked at the different constraints that the marine life gave us throughout the year in our marine activities. By working together with Environment Canada, we expect to dredge with lower capacity, implement some mitigating measures, and strong monitoring, of course, on what is the impact to uh, the marine environment. And the majority of the dredging will take place in, in the seasons between um, 1st of December and mid-February. We've done an extensive investigation, so I think we can do a very responsible job and we can fulfill our commitment when it comes to the impact that the dredging work does. Where's the approval process from the, the permitting process? The permit hasn't been given to the regulator yet. And then we go file together or they, they file with our support, basically? They're going to file with our support, based on studying all this information here. We have tried to answer every question we could answer and we'll also compare it to the original disposal sea that happened 30, 40 years ago. That was done without any of our involvement and our people watched the barges go out there and dump all that sediment out in the middle of the channel with no consultation. This will be the absolute reverse. It will be done with full Heisel involvement. This is my coast. We don't want to see it spoil. Just not worth it to us. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Hi Jack, come on in. And so some really good answers have to come out of this. And I think that process started. I really do. Every carving I make has a story. I don't carve anything that hasn't got a story. <laughs> this is my home. And I don't want it spoiled.